remember flying into Nasir and the drive from the airstrip to the compound, which is probably a kilometer, maybe less. And I saw more guns than I'd ever seen in my life combined. Mostly I was seeing people who were affected by the war because they couldn't access healthcare where they usually could. We heard that a woman had been carried in who had been in labor for two days and was unconscious. She was, had snoring respirations, which is sort of a I'm going to die sign. Uh, she was just fiery hot to touch. I was just thinking, oh God, like these, both these people are gonna die. You know, the, the baby and the mom are going to die and I'm throwing everything I know at it. Uh, so we, I was pushing so many drugs, it was crazy. You know, we had antibiotics going, we had fluids going, we had sugar going, and I'm just sweating this woman's labor. Like, I don't know if I've ever been so terrified. And we were able to get some contractions going with the meds, and then baby actually started to descend. And I was like, oh my God, you know, we, we, we might be okay here. Uh, so baby descended, you could see the head, and then baby stopped. And then the baby has a tight nuchal cord. The cord is wrapped around this kid's neck. It can't come down. Oh my God, all right, fine. So wait, clamp it, cut it, get the baby. Baby's completely flat. There's no tone, there's no breathing. And I was just like, I was swearing. Uh, so then we did a pretty full neonatal resuscitation. We gave it to mom, kangaroo care, to try and warm it up. She started to cry, and I was like, oh my God. It, it gave meaning to, and I think at, at the time it was like, it was like amazing, right? You're just on a high from having done that. But it honestly made it all worth it because I knew that that mom and baby were alive. We took them with us when we um, evacuated later that day. These are people whose lives depend on it and would have nothing without MSF and really appreciate our presence.